So the, the, the biggest trouble is selfishness. We don't want the person God wants for us. We want our own standards, our own ways. Nothing wrong with your ways as long as you submit your ways to God and God will direct you. But when we stand only on our ways, God cannot interfere if we are going to do mistake to another mistake to another mistake to another mistake. So our health starts with our mind. The way you think and the principle you live by. And we are social beings. We are family beings. So if you violate the first principle of your existence, which is family, nothing else will work. So it's very, very important to take family establishment very, very seriously and give a total education to young people, even some adults, to really understand divine institution of a marriage. It's extremely important. It will affect the way you manage your finance, your food, your stress level, your faith, your everything. So we have to be careful how we step into the decision of being married. What does this have to do with health? It has everything to do with health. If you are a man, let's say, so you are a woman, and you choose somebody who don't have the same faith like you for a partner for life. If that person isn't bad for you, you're going to end up eating bad for you. You will. You will resist a little bit in the beginning, but association is very contagious. You will end up with bad habits. If you marry somebody who smokes, you are not smoking, but you're going to end up breathing that all the time. And it, 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 if you test your blood, you're going to have all this smoke in your blood. So it's important for us to understand that fully submitting to God, pray God and ask Him for revelation for the person He has for you in life is number one. quality for a successful life. If you can't be peaceful with someone, you are in trouble. You are in a real trouble. Let our way go and ask God in a prayer and a fasting. Ask sign for God to show you sign. And when you ask him for sign, you don't do that in audible prayer. You do it in silent prayer. Because Satan can answer your audible prayers, can show you a sign, and you will see it from God. So we have to be careful when we ask him to sign. And educate yourself about these things. There are many books, many faithful pastors teaching on YouTube. Learn, educate yourself about how to handle Preparation for marriage and a married life godly. Very, very important for your health. This is a part of your first trust in God. And it's God who established marriage. So your marriage life should be principled under God. The man do not follow his own will, and the woman don't follow his own will. Both must follow God's principle for marriage. Because God is the one who institutes marriage. So when we think like that, especially when you are young and you have this clear in your mind to rely on God, you will save yourself a lot of headache. Some people they already have three divorces already. Why? They're working by their own sight, not according to God's direction. Also, you can keep yourself not doing anything and believing you're waiting on God. It's a big mistake many people are doing now. You are not praying, you are not doing anything, you're just waiting until nothing happens. 
And when you get up, boom, mistake. So we need to see our family life is have a big part to play with our health. If you are married to an alcoholic, and we know that alcohol have a big impact on your DNA, and you're going to pass some of these wrong things to the children. You can have a sick child just because you're alcoholic, and that becomes a family problem. Managing a sick child is a serious trouble. So imagine you make a mistake. The person eat bad food, you're eating bad food. The person smoke, you are around, you are bringing the smoke. Alcoholic children get sick from it. And the person is very, uh, uh, what do we call it, nagging, whatever. You're always under stress. You are, your life is done. So preparation and marriage life, all of this are a serious part of your health. Very important. And it's part of your trust in God. I will spend more time on trust in God for many reasons. The research from Harvard University shows that more than 90% of disease in America is linked to stress level. You have different kinds of stress, emotional stress, physical stress, mental stress, all the stress you can imagine. But when you fully trust God, you and your family, you can say like Joshua, me and my family will serve the Lord. And God promised that if we are faithful, none of the disease that touch Egyptians will touch us. It's divine promise, and God never tell a lie. Trust in God. It has to do with how your brain is functioning. Your stress level will be reduced. Your trust in God will help you look at problems differently. And I was talking about that last Sabbath. If you know, the Bible says that God prepared the way of escape before it comes. So before any problem happens in your life, you need to know God knew that. Are you going to prepare a way of escape for it? That simply means you don't need to worry about that. When you go to God in prayer and submission and obedience, He will show you His way He has prepared for escape. So let's make a little comparison here. I said two people have the same problem. One is a Christian and one is a non-Christian. The non-Christian has to face the problem alone by himself. And that will be very stressful. The Christian will face the problem with God. And a God is a problem solver. So when a Christian, you see a problem, you see behind that problem a miracle about to come. You know that God already has a way of escape. So you don't only see the problem, you already see the way out. And you don't worry about that. Because worry is something very dangerous that even change the chemistry of our brain and our blood. When you worry, when you are afraid, the level of your hormones are in danger. Your serotonin, your, mel- your, your cortisol, like we are in big trouble. Your stress hormones are in big trouble. But when you trust God, you have that peace, you take the problem to God in prayer and fasting, life comes out different. I can tell about myself. When I was non-Christian, I faced life alone with a lot of challenges. When I become a Christian, oh, it's a new life. And being a Christian not about going to church is trust God and obey God. From then, anything I have, I know I go straight to God. In prayer, in fasting, He always have a way out for me. To the point where nothing scares me. Absolutely nothing. Even there, if I have to die now, okay, I'm ready to go. Because I know He will resurrect me the way He did it to Moses and other people. So trusting God fully is the key of happy life. 
is a key for a healthy life. It's a key to live with any situation and still be fine. Anyway, I'm talking about what I experience and what I know for a fact. So when I trust God, I have my problem, but I'm okay. Why? I take the problem to God. How this play on my health? A lot. Because when you spend a night being worried about problems, you don't sleep well, you wake up very tired, very exhausted, and you have to get up and go to work. You go to work because you don't trust God, somebody pisses you off, you don't even pray, so you pick up that offense also, plus that. You don't trust God, you eat the kind of food you want, so you start a day with your coffee. And a coffee, if you drink one cup of coffee, your body needs five cups of water to balance the pH of that, uh, uh, the acidosis of that coffee will create in your system. So coffee is a very dehydrating substance. We should not be drinking coffee. Coffee is a medicine. It's not a food. So you don't trust God, you will move from mistake to mistake to mistake. You don't sleep in the night well. You go to work, you open it, and then in all of that, you drink coffee first, that's going to dehydrate you. Your brain can't function right. You get stressed right away. So you don't need a medicine. You need to learn God's way of life. So when you do God's way of life, the complete opposite is happening. You have a problem, but you still pray about it, put it in God's hand, and you sleep. You wake up in the morning, you thank God for life, and you pray again about your problem. You go to work, somebody says something bad to you, you do like Jesus, First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 to 23. You come in yourself to go, you let a problem go, you forgive the person, you're free. Sometimes we think that when we forgive somebody, it's a weakness. No, it's a strength, it's a power. Because when you don't forgive, you are the only one who is disturbed. The only one. So you are doing yourself a favor to let problem go. Actually, you are doing yourself a big favor. So you let the problem go out. You forgive the person because the Bible says to forgive. You believe that. Coffee, you don't drink the coffee. Instead of drinking the coffee, maybe you take a fresh green juice or something else or some good smoothie or whatever. It gives you so much energy, so much antioxidants. So much vitamins, mineral that you need. Your mental clarity come up. So it's a two people with a two mentality, two different beliefs, with two different lifestyles, with a two different outcomes. So I am not talking about going to church. I'm talking about trusting God, fear God. Obey God in everything. That's how life makes sense. Because God creates life, only God can fix life. The same way the mother is the only one understand the need of the child. He's the only one really worry for that child, really like care for that child. God care. If we submit, He will bless with all the blessing. If we don't want, He respects our choice. Trust in God is a very important. I mean, very important. It plays, I can say, 100% in your life. So, for the sake of time, I just leave it there. If you trust God, you have less stress, you make less mistakes. Even don't make no mistake, if you fully trust God, He will guide you through everything. If it happens that you are sick, what do you do? You feel it, submit to God. You bring the problem to God for healing, and you take God away for healing. Use the herb, the natural things, the juice, the vitamin, mineral, whatever you need, and God is going to help you to be to well. So we finish number one. Number two is nutrition. For nutrition, we are in a big crisis and a big deception because today, the nutrition, you see, the, the system is set up in a way that everything is connected. 
So when you go to take the class in nutrition, they're going to teach you things that you have in the market so that that market can sell this in out and run the economy of the country. So the nutrition is not real necessarily somebody who know about health. Yes, he thinks about health, but the people who conceive the program for nutrition, they conceive this in purposely to sell out most of the stuff they have in the store. That's why they can tell you milk is good, you need a milk, you need this, you need that. Do we know in the whole earth only human beings consuming the milk of another? Animals don't do that. It's a violation to our body functioning. And, and, and milk is very toxic to human beings. If you drink cow milk, it's toxic. But your mother milk, oh my goodness, it blew your whole system. It's the best medicine ever. I would suggest you watch videos on YouTube on how milk that the nutrition is going to prescribe for your calcium. Now research are proving that milk really depletes your body from calcium. Wow. So what the nutrition is doing to you? He's killing you slowly because himself he don't know. Why? The person who put milk as a part of our diet, as a source of protein, a source of calcium, all of that. They're the same people who are who have the ranch, who are producing the milk for the industry, for the market. So they have to tell you that milk is so good. So we are in a system where things are set up, and we just take them. And unfortunately, we don't see better. So there is a professor. His name is Professor Arnold Erez. After all I learned from pre-medical school, all of these things, this man really changed my thinking about physiology, anatomy, and diet. He's a white man, and he starts thinking different. Reading many, many research of the ancient way of nutrition and health, and the men find out that the way we're eating now is completely contrary to how people used to eat. So he tried some experimentation upon himself. He changed his diet. He removed all these flowers, all these things, cheese, milk, whatever. He go plant-based, exercising, drinking water well, resting well, all of this. He finds out even his white skin starts changing to become brown. He feels strong, healthy. Mental clarity, everything is coming back. It was like, wait a minute. So my food is changing the color of my skin, the color of my eye, everything? Yes, everything. I would suggest you read his book, Mycoslet Diet. It's a perfect diet on earth. It's way better than ketogenic diet for, from any other diet I know. The mycoslet diet, if you do it very well, it will save you from a lot of headache in life. Ketogenic will help you, but on long term can hurt you if you don't know how to do it right. I am not against that diet, but I'm just saying you have better than that. So Arnold Herder lets you know that most of the food we are eating is made. For example, carrot. God never created any carrot. We make a carrot. They take the wild carrot called Queen Anne Flake and they make hybrid carrots that we have in the store for the market. It's about business. It don't have nothing to do with your nutrition. But guess what? The nutritionist is going to tell you you need vitamin A, so you're going to take a lot of carrots. No. She, he or she who is a nutritionist is just working for the, the market without knowing because the people who set up the curriculum or the textbook of nutrition, they think of selling things they have. That's how it works. Most of your green, leafy greens, have a lot of vitamin A you need. The beans, the beans are not healthy. Beans are 
very rich in nitrate. It's very acidic. And the beans are made in England. Go online and check hybrid food on the Department of Agriculture of America. You are going to be surprised. 99% of what we have in the store is man-made. God did not make them. So this thing creates a serious inflammation in our body. It does not have a chemical affinity because the instant you twist the DNA, you're in trouble. Big trouble. That's why we have a serious problem today called broken gene. It comes from this bad food, this man-made food we're eating. It was um, in 2010 or 11. There was a man in our church, the church I used to go at that time, and he lived in the same building I lived here. He ended up with a lot of stress, a lot of problems, boom, ended up with leukemia. It was so bad. He had to be on a chemo and all of this. I went to visit him in the hospital. That's why they gave him the cancer patient to eat. Milk, bread, sugar, egg. I called the family and said, uh uh-uh, you gotta take this man out of this diet because it will kill him. They said, no, the doctor says. So, okay. I, I guarantee you, if he is like that, you can pray and do whatever you wanna do, it will not, he will not get well. He will not get well. Because you cannot put so much mucus forming acidic food in a cancerous body, it will never work. We were praying that time, seven days, Pray and fast, and may I stop? Because it doesn't make any sense. Because God says very well, if you violate the law of health and you pray, I won't listen to your prayer. He end up dead. And these are a crime that we are committing in the name of ignorance. I don't know everything for sure. But for the letter I see, I know I can see that we are making too much mistake because we are ignorant. Because we trust in the system too much who don't really care for us. Because if this system really care for us, at least they can let the, the mothers have at least six months or a year for the child. So that child can have enough breast milk because that's how you build your immune system for life. And they rob innocent child from the most important thing in eating. So the system is not for our favor. So we have to be smart enough. We have to know how to avoid to be a great victim. You cannot avoid everything, but try your most. So when it comes to nutrition, please, don't grab any book around there try to learn nutrition. That's a big mistake. Because the information inside is for the market purpose. If you want to learn about nutrition, visiting the nutrition is not the best way to go. You want to learn about nutrition, go and learn what the animal eats, what the monkey eats, what the gorilla eats, because their DNA is very close to our DNA. Watch on YouTube, there's a family called Butenko, Butenko family. They were all sick, sick, sick. Some have diabetes, some are asthmatic, all of them sick, mother sick, father sick, children sick. Imagine everybody is sick. That's a happy family. No, you can make all the money you want. You can pay all the bills, but you are not happy. That's a misery. And I call it the, that, that's a poverty at its finest. Even though you have money, you are a miserable person. Your condition is worse than someone who, who lives in one dollar a day. They don't have none of these diseases you have. Don't have no stress. Don't have a bill to pay. So the Butenko family, so one day the mother decides, she hear about changing the diet can improve their health. So she come home, she say, what? Well, I'm going to make some drastic change. She took all the pans, anything you can use for cooking, pork, pan, whatever. She took them and drive far away and dump this in dumpster. And she went and get good cutting board and a knife. So you know what? 
In this house, nothing gonna be cooked. We go raw, everybody. In a couple of months, all the disease was gone. Diabetes gone, asthma gone, everything gone. Just a little now that you save your whole family life, you save the misery, you save the stress. Just that. But the doctor will never tell you that. The doctor put all the whole family on medication. And the nutrition is going to go out. The whole bad counsel to everybody to be followed. Nothing's going to get well until you change and you say things God's way. The way God said things to be. They get well, but they still need to learn. They were eating too much fruit, and they started having uh, discovery on their, their teeth, all of that. So she started researching how we, we get well, that we create another problem now. And she finds out that gorilla is one of the closest animals to our DNA, and she studied the, what? the nutrition of gorilla, how gorilla eats. And she finds out that gorilla eats fruit, more green, not Seed, cereal, all of that. And she do much research to see the proportion and put the whole family on gorilla diet. You know what happened? All the cavities gone, everything gets fixed. And they stay on that. That's what I call having common sense and understanding. Today we have a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge, books, all of this. Research, left and right, the common sense and understanding is not there. So we are very educated in the wrong way. And that is the problem we have today. So nutrition, that's what I recommend. Go and study the nutrition of gorilla and learn every detail about it. Understand. Exercise. I'm going to go there right away. So number three is exercise. <laughs> exercise is very important. Why? Because your lung, your lung flu won't move properly if you don't exercise. You have your lung and your heart to pump your blood, but nothing really pumping your lung flu. And your lens is the largest fluid in your body, three to four times the amount of blood you have. So if you don't exercise, your lens is very stagnant. You're going to develop all the disease. And length is your number one place to develop your immune, immune system. Yes, of course, length is your gut. So when you exercise, you are flushing your lymphatic fluid. You are sweating. That's why you see the sweat under our armpit and uh, our private part, all of that. The sweat is slightly stronger than other part of your body because... You have much lymph node at this part of the body to take the toxin from your body and flush it out from your system. Exercise increase your mental ability, your mental power, because you have to resist. You have to create some resistance in your brain that even though you are burned, you're still doing what you, are, what you do as exercise. It increases your dopamine. It increases your happy hormone. It increases your blood flow. It increases a lot. It makes your blood run well. You purify your blood, more oxygenation, everything you can imagine. You have more strong bones, clean arteries, everything. But even the, tra- even the exercise, you need to learn the better exercise. Better exercise is uh, interval training. You do very fast. You stop. Let the body relax. And you restart again. This helps you not to build too much lactic acid in your muscles. But if you do a continual run for like 10, 20 minutes, it's not very healthy. Because during the time you're doing heavy exercise, you're not only giving the time to the body to recover before you continue. So you have so much buildup of lactic acid in your joint, in your muscle, all of that. It's not healthy at all you will see that most of the athletes don't live long. Because when you're doing too much heavy exercise, not only are you accumulating too much acid, but at the same time, you are sweating out mineral from your body. Unless you find a good way to supplement the minerals, 
with a green juice, sea moss, bararak, silica, all of this stuff out there. So exercise needs to be done with uh, education. So this thing we're doing today is introduction that you personally can research because today knowledge is available. You want to know everything about exercise? Tons of videos on that. You want to know everything about nutrition? Uh, you don't have a, a lot of good, but you'll find some. The nutrition, like I already said, go to Gorilla. That is the best way to get good nutrition. Exercise it help you sleep well, give you the strong muscle, the strong heart, everything you need. Exercise give you just choose the right way to exercise. That's why when you go to Adam and he tell them to cultivate the garden, they have to exercise. He told them to eat the food and the food he has provided. That is God in nutrition. When it comes to the water, he tell them the water to drink, clean good water. So number four, water. Number four, on water, I would like to let us see something about water. The water we drink today is very acidic. They do the test on most of this bottled water is very acidic. Spring water is acidic. Most of the water are acidic. For my knowledge, it's better to have distilled water and put some salt in it, Celtic salt or Himalayan pink salt. It gives you the perfect balanced pH for water. You can have your pH marker and you test it yourself. You will be so surprised that it's the best water. Kangen machine, all of that is good, but much more, much, much, much more of commercial stuff. If I can recommend a machine for water, I would recommend a machine called Water Marker. Water Marker costs you about $2,000, but believe me, it will give you way more than that. The water we drink, it has about 22 to 24 molecules clubbed in one. And these 24 molecules cannot go through your cell membrane layers like that. It has to be broken down to single molecule that is easily go through your cell membrane to get into your cell. So this doctor, the machine, easily break down this molecule to single molecule. So when you drink the water right now, you can feel the whole difference. It goes straight in your throat. Water marker conceived by Dr. Robert Young. Dr. Robert Young, water marker. It's the best machine I know. It's way better than Kengen machine. You can buy a Kengen machine for 7000 quarter of a thousand, but it have nothing close to water market. Only 2000 Way better. Someone will say, how will you spend $2,000 just for water machine? Okay, go buy all the shoes, all the buy better car, everything you want. That you won't help you for any help. That's what I say. is the thinking. If you believe your body is God property, you will treat it with a lot of respect and reverence. You can just change the brand of the car you use and you can have money to take care of your health. If BMW is taking too much in your expenses, change it to Toyota or some simple car, you still have transportation and you can have better money to take care of your health. Our thinking about health is a very contrary to health principles. When we have the check, we don't think about health. We think about the house, the car, the everything, and we are the last one. People pay their mortgage, pay everything, and they end up eating crap in a house. Why? They think they are the last. And God says, I want you to be the first because I die only for you. I didn't die for the car. Christ did not die for any car, for any house. He died for the individual. So we have to create a system where we know how to put priority. You are the priority on your budget. You, as an individual, what you eat, how you drink, how you do everything, that is you. You first, because God puts you first. So water, the key of our water is the pH of the water. Now, our shower, we have to have shower head that will filter fluoride and chlorine from the water. Because this thing, especially when you're taking a hot shower, it goes straight through your pores into your bloodstream. 
And this will really unleash your body from calcium because calcium is the most alkalizing mineral in our body. So for the body to balance any pH, you need to pull out calcium. Your water. I would suggest when you wake up in the morning, drink as much as you can. But sit down before you drink the water. But the new research recommends when you sit down, your body use the water better. When you get up from your bed, number one thing, drink water first and drink a lot of it. The first time you can start with a cup. You go to two cups, even to three cups. Why? It helps you go to the bathroom easily in the morning. It hydrates the body. It facilitates a lot of things. It helps the lubrification. It dilutes the, the, the H, um, HCL, the hydrochloric acid you're still making in the morning. It does a lot to your body. It flushes your kidneys. It, you know, it, it releases your liver. It makes your colon function right. Drinking water first is so important. And I mean very important. Especially if your water has a salt in there, like I said, oh, my goodness, that's the best way to start the day. When you go to the hospital, you're very weak, all of that. What they give you first? They do the, trans- the, the transfusion of what? Salty water, that's all, to get you up, to get the ratio of your sodium potassium right before they start doing anything else for you. Why not do in the house by drinking the salty water? But you don't put too much water, it becomes salty. No. Put a little bit. I can say half of a teaspoon in one gallon of water. You won't, you won't even taste it. Me and my water I drink, if I give you, you won't taste salt in it. But it's salt, it's salt, it's salt in it. I put calcium there in the, in the water. And the calcium so have 82 minerals. The table so have only two minerals. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. Your doctor will tell you, oh, blood, if you have blood pressure patient, don't take salt. No. Please take your salt, but don't take table salt. Table salt is dangerous to any blood pressure patient. The Himalayan pink salt, Celtic salt, they are good medicine for the same blood pressure. Wow, really? Yes, really. Your water. Next, don't drink water during your meal. It's not good. Why? When you are eating, your body needs an enzyme, the, all the enzymes to digest well. And much more, your hydrochloric acid, the pH will be kept right. But when you drink water while you're eating, you are diluting the pH of your hydrochloric acid. You cannot break down your protein properly. You're in trouble. So it's recommended to drink water 30 to 1 hour before your meal. And hour or two after your meal based on how heavy is your meal. Okay, so check your shower, shower water that you are filtering chlorine and chlorine out. You're drinking water, make sure the pH is right. During your meal, don't drink water. And during the day, drink enough water, but not close to your meals. Okay, not close to your meal. So you drink water according to your body weight and your kind of activity you do. So learn about that. There are many information about it. So the quality of water and how you drink water is very important. Drinking a lot of water in the morning, enough water. Quality of water, your shower water, many other stuff. Okay? Good. So water, we're done with the water. I can tell you, oh, there's something I need to say about water. Magnesium and water. If your body is lacking magnesium, the body cannot be taking the water into your cells. If you drink a lot, of, a lot of water right now, guess what? You're going to go in the bathroom and pee all the water out. Why? You are depleting the magnesium. So you're drinking water a whole day, but you still be dehydrated. Why? Because you don't know that without magnesium, the body cannot use water properly. Very important information. I mean, very. Where do you get your magnesium from? Green juice. You can su- supplement with uh, some good magnesium. I can recommend Dr. Caroline, Caroline Dean. Dr. Caroline Dean, uh, she developed a very good formula for calcium that's very good to be absorbed. Supplement, I don't recommend 
people run just to the vitamin shop and buy any supplement. These things are just for market. The quality is not really there, and the price can tell you that. So if you list some good stuff, search for people who have things that have been proven that is working, that is real. Okay? What about water? I think you can have much research about it. The next is sunlight. Sunlight helps you a lot. It is a research has been shown that the countries that have more sunlight, the people there have more high IQ about math and physics. Why? When you look at the sun, the sun creates some excitement through your optic nerve that helps the part of your brain that's much more for calculus, for thinking stuff. So it makes that place much developed. It makes that ability much easier for you to move. So myself, like yesterday I was on the sun, I went today, I closed my eye and I look, in, I look on the sun. It's a very, very good for your brain. If the sun is not too high, you can look straight just for a minute and take it out. It's very good, seriously good for your brain. Look at the research for that. I remember something about water. I have a book here of uh, somebody named, I can't pronounce the name, it's too, too difficult for me. But the title is, The Body Many Cry for Water. He's a man, he's a doctor, for some political reason, he ended up in jail. Now, in that jail, you have about 3,000 prisoners. So he can see most of them exhausted, tired, sick, all of that. And this doctor decided to heal all of them without any medication. What he did, he teach them about water and make everybody drinking water very often. And they noticed that all of the prisoners end up being well. All of them. Water is a healer. Why? It hydrates your body. It regulates the pH of your lymphatic fluid. It helps your blood. Help your brain, help the lubrification of your body. It does a lot. They just need how you drink. Don't drink a lot at the same time, except in the morning. Some of them are very sick. He was giving them one cup of water every hour to flush all the disease out. The body, many cry. You can buy that book. It will give you so much instruction about water. You will be so surprised. Hydrotherapy about water, very important. Hydrotherapy, you can do wet sheet pack. You can do fermentation. You can do a Russian steam bath. You can do the simple steam bath. It's a whole list of water therapy, hydrotherapy. Okay? So I almost forgot to say that. So we come back to the sunlight. The sunlight it help you. People saying the sun will give you cancer, skin cancer. You need to put sunscreen. No, you don't need no sunscreen. That's a lie. You need to change your diet and eat right. If you have enough of good cholesterol build under your skin, that is your protection. But if your diet don't give you good cholesterol under your skin, then you are now left to have a skin cancer when you, so you are taking the sunlight or sun bath. So the key is not about putting sunscreen a lot. It's about changing your diet and your body will be okay. There is a man, his name is Gary Tibo. You can look at him on uh, YouTube. He used to have a lot of sunburn so bad and have a lot of disease, uh, chrome disease and diet, all of that. When he changed his diet, even to the very highest, best diet ever, he was eating wild, wild vegetables. You want to eat down the lion salad, he go in a bush and grab it. He don't go in the store. You know what happened to him after a couple of good times? He don't have sunburn anymore. Sunburn was gone. Why? The fat under his skin now is a good quality of fat. Sunburn is gone. He don't need sunscreen. He's a white person. But the doctor don't know that he won't tell you. And nutritional won't tell you either because it was not in the textbook. The gorilla eats what? Wild vegetables. You never go in. A, you never see any gorilla going to the store to to purchase anything. They eat free food. 
And God wants us to eat free food. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Free food. Sunlight. When you take sunlight, don't go take shower right after that. It's not good. After you take the sunlight, it requires at least two hours for the body to synthesize the process of the, to do the process the, the process the, the 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 synthesis of the vitamin D. So if you just take sunlight and then boom, you come and go in the shower, you lose everything. And I mean everything. So many don't know if they go to the beach, they take sunlight, then next day they jump in the water. No, it's not good. Take your sunlight and come back. Relax for another two hours, then take shower. Okay? Sunlight has a lot. Vitamin D helps your body to absorb calcium. They say that vitamin D have more than 100 functions in your body. When you combine vitamin D and iodine, that's a very good killer for uh, for the many cancers. So your vitamin D play in your metabolism, in your catabolism, it play a lot in your great systems of the body because it's a great medicine when you come. Because without enough vitamin D, you'll have calcification of your calcium will become a very dangerous thing for you. The body will not use it, will not fix it, so it become a waste in your system and if that becomes hard, it can create so much trouble in your body. Vitamin D, especially D3. Pay attention to that. Listen to people, learn about it. <laughs> so our next thing is um, number six, temperance. Temperance is what? Well. The definition of temperance is moderate use of what is good and a complete abstinence from what is bad. An example, alcohol is bad, complete abstinence. Cigarette is bad, complete abstinence. Now the food, your green juice is good, but do it for moderation. Oil is good, but do it with moderation, depending on which oil we're talking about. And by the way, when you do green juice, I recommend you add a little bit of fat, like a little bit of oil. I recommend much more hemp oil to all your green juice. Why? Your green juice have a lot of liposoluble mineral environments. That means it can be absorbed only in the presence of the fat. So after digestion in your small intestine, you have two ways of absorption. You absorb things through what? The little vessel, blood vessels in your small intestine, and you also have the blood, okay, blood vessel or blood capillaries. Okay, the blood capillaries, a small, small thing in your small intestine that absorb the nutrients into your bloodstream. At the same time, you have lymph capillaries that will be absorbing things that are much linked to fat. So when you don't have enough fat or oil in your green juice, you are robbing yourself from this liposoluble substance that should be absorbed in your lymph capillaries, and you are missing it. You're losing it a lot. So it's very important, very, very important information. When you have a patient on juice and stuff like that, always add, even a teaspoon to the green juice, one jar of green juice, teaspoon, just a little bit, you don't need a lot, just a little bit. Okay. Temperance. Exercise be temperance. Don't do too much and don't avoid eating. The whatever is bad, complete abstinence. Whatever is good, moderation. So in a simple word again, temperance is moderation in the use of good and healthy things and a complete abstinence in anything that is bad for health. So for abstinence, we can stop right there. After abstinence, we have um, the air, the air we breathe. We need to check the quality of air. It's very important because our air is so polluted today. You've got to check your house 
If mold is in the house, you're going to pollute the air. If you are using bleach in a house, you're going to pollute your air. Many houses have the dishwashing machine. After that, they have what else? They have the laundry machine, laundry machine. All of this stuff, you are having so much chemical in your house, it made the house very polluted. I mean very. And that is dangerous. So the breathing of the air, you can be breathing air and be still be shutting enough oxygen in your system. You still be lacking oxygen. Your oxygenation level will be low if you don't have a good level of iron in your blood. When you breathe right now, air it goes into your lungs. From your lungs go to your heart and to the heart to the blood. Now, yes also in your lung you have these capillaries that will pick up your oxygen for sure. But the thing is that when the air go in your system. Especially your red blood cell have the hemoglobin and inside that molecule of hemoglobin you have the mineral called iron. Is only that iron gonna fix your oxygen and take it to all the cells in your body. So the imagine if you are lacking oxygen, you are in trouble. Your body cannot be properly oxygenated. It's not possible. You will be lacking oxygen even though you breathe in out. Iron, iron, iron when it comes to oxygenating your body. There's an ozone therapy out there. Yes, I recommend it, but make sure you're taking the safe way to do it. They have some uh, oxygen capsule today. Oh, the some of the companies are good enough, but they don't take everything. Especially when you come from China, be very careful. Okay? So they have oxygen capsules. And I can recommend that to cancer patients and anyone. Oxygen capsule. The air. Learn how to do deep breathing, especially in the morning. In the morning, you can, if you can have some little walk outside, and you do a lot of deep breathing. It's a very healing, very healing. You can do uh, some kind of uh, changing the air, the atmosphere of your air. There are many, um, how you call it? Um, I just remember the name, I almost forget it. This machine they put in the they put in a in the room to clean the air. How you call that again? Air air uh, humidifier. Some of humidifier. them you can use. Humidifier. Yeah. yeah, high humidifier. You can use essential oil in it. Okay. So if somebody having some lung problem, put some drop of lavender, some drop of uh, uh, oregano oil some extra of uh, melon. There are many good oils, frankincense, stuff like that, to help your lungs big time. You can create a very good atmosphere in your house just by using these good humidifiers. <laughs> you know? The air, you need a clean air. But the worst enemy in the house is mold and our laundry machine, our dish machine, all of these things releasing toxins in the house. Very, very important. Now, you can try all of these things and it's still having chemical in your system. How do you handle that? I recommend at least once a week to take a charcoal. Charcoal bind most of the toxins out of your body. There's also something called humic, humic acid. It's 20 times better than charcoal. So I made a medicine that is for heavy metal only, extremely effective. If you would like to have some, you can call me and then I will ship it to you. 
take charcoal once a week at least. If you can afford to have pemic and all of this, then great. So no matter how you go, you're going to be breathing this toxin out there. You go in the subway, you breathe something. You're driving, you breathe something. So we already breathing something. So it's recommended that no matter how much you try, better care for yourself. You still have to be pulling heavy metal from your body. Why? Most of our food has too much pesticide in it, too much fertilizer, too much chemical in the food, too much chemical in the water. So we have to remove this toxin from our body, taking charcoal, we make acid, all of this stuff. So, <clears throat> the last one is number eight. Rest. The sleep. As much as you can, go to bed about eight, about nine, nine thirty. That's the best time to go to bed. We can. It's better to sleep way before 12 because the research proves that the benefits of sleeping before 12 have two time benefits at the hours after 12. So if you sleep 9 o'clock from 9 to 12, that's three hours. And that three hours is better than when you sleep from 12 to 3. So when you sleep from 9 to 12, it's like if you sleep from 12 to 6 a.m. So it's double in value. So that's why it's recommended. It's better to go to bed early and wake up early than going to bed late and wake up late. Why? There are a lot of reasons. We can't say all here. You're going to research on it. They will give you some of them. <clears throat> From 9 o'clock, there's something called the psychiatric circle of our body. The body works with the sun. The body follows the movement of the sun. Your body is very intelligent. How your body knows that, how your heart knows that how to beat 70 times in a minute. How, if a woman, how your body knows that your cell is going to go this way every month. That the body has so much intelligence that we have to respect that. So when it comes to the hormone level, from 9 o'clock, your body starts making up what? Melatonin. This is the rest hormone. Help the body to cool down, to repair, to clean up the fatigue, and do all of that. You will notice when you go to bed early, you wake up in the morning very good, very in a good mood, happy, strong. When you go to late, you wake up very stressed out, very, like, not good. Sluggish, all of that. So you have to respect your hormone because during the day, we have a very alert hormone that help us to be alert to go here, do this, do that. In the evening, we're going down with what? Melatonin to function, right? So you don't need a lot of knowledge about sleep. Just go 9 to 9.30. It's recommended not to eat and just go to bed straight. So if you can eat earlier, at least two hours before you go to bed, try it. If you know you eat a heavy meal in the evening, take it with some enzyme. It will help you digest far before you go to sleep. So resting is very important. It repair your body. It cleanse your body. It's a lot about rest. It's a lot about rest. So, in a nutshell, that is the eighth law of health. So, number one, trust in God. Number two, nutrition. Number three, exercise. Number four, water. Number five, sunlight. Number six, temperance. Number seven, air. Number eight, rest or sleep. So in a rest, God says, he made a body to rest. So I say, every Sabbath, the seventh day, I want the body I create to rest. Don't go walk, don't do anything, worship me. Change your activity, change your thinking. That's how Adam and Eve was made. It was made to walk six days and rest one day. And today we break that circle. The Catholic Church comes and says, no, don't follow God 
raise animal, follow my way, and put a sandal for everybody. And most of the Christians keeping the sandal, they ever ask themselves, where did this sandal come from? It's not in the Bible. That's a man institution, period. It's not good for the function of our body at all. It's like you are completely reversing what God put there. It's violating the function of our body, the circle of the body. Don't do that. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. So we can put this in acronym, N for nutrition, E for exercise, and W for water. That's new. New. N for nutrition, E for exercise, W for water. That's new. Now, we're going to put stop. Start, we're going to put S for sun, T for temperance, A for air, R for rest, and T for trusting God. So I become new stuff. New stuff. Some people put it in another way to have God way. So it depends how you take it. So when you put new stuff, you remember very well the eighth law of hell. Okay. Please, this is just a simple introduction. I suggest to everyone listen to these things. Take these eight laws one by one and research on them. And make sure you are getting the good source of research. There are many deceiving information out there. So but don't learn from one doctor. Learn from many and compare things and then add your own judgment to it. So now I can think of some couple of questions that we're going to be closing. Any question? Last week I gave some homework. Yes, anybody want to say a question? What enzymes do you use with the meals? You said if you eat late at night, you can eat use enzymes. What enzymes? It depends the kind of food you eat. If you eat a food rich in protein, then you're going to eat enzymes that are very rich in uh, uh, lipase, uh, bromelain, and uh, papain that can break down your protein. If you eat a food that is very rich in uh, carbohydrate, take the enzyme rich in carbohydrate. But there's some kind of plant enzyme that contains everything you need for the protein, amino uh, for for, uh, the, for the protein, for the fat, and for the carbohydrate. So I use a, a enzyme called plant enzyme. You can use that. Or you can use enzyme from divine nature, they're good. So there are many good enzymes just set it up before you use it. Okay? It depends the kind of meal you take in the evening. It's better to eat light food in the evening. Light food. Okay? Anyone else? Any question? Can you give the name of the book? I didn't get it. My name is I can't Jane. hear. Any question? The name of the book that you gave out just now. The name of the book is The Water Many Cry. No, bo- Body Many Cry for Water. Bore many cry for words. And the other one? The other one that was for what? Mm-hmm. I remember giving one book. I don't know if I see another one. Cry for words. One is Robert Young. That's it. Yeah, this doctor, his name is Batman Jetlid. Your body, many cry for water. Okay. It's called, the doctor name is Dr. Bat. Huh? Doctor, what's his name, doctor? Dr. Batman Jetlid. D-A-T-M-A-N-G-H-E. 
L I D D. If you go on YouTube, you're gonna see. Just put your body many cry for water. It will come out. Okay. Mhm. Mm your body many you say, cry for water. You said the distilled water is better than the regular water. Say it again. The distilled water. The distilled water is better than the regular water. Oh yeah, better. But you have to add salt to it. If you don't add salt, the distilled water becomes very dangerous because oh, it's, yeah. it's empty of minerals. So distilled water don't have mineral in it. So when you add Celtic salt to it, the Celtic salt have 82 minerals, so you have the water completely better. If you don't have a Celtic salt, you can add the Himalayan pink salt. They have 70 plus mineral also. They do never add table salt to water. Table salt is dangerous, very deadly. You don't even put it in your food. You never cook with table salt. It's not good. Any other question? I recommend uh, there's a little book uh, called Green Life, I think. Green Life of uh, Butenko Family. So you learn their stories is very, very practical and um, very informative. Very, very good book. Very simple, but really rich. And your Call phone it Green number, Life. Please? Huh? Your, your phone number. Yeah, my phone number is 347 984 3402. Okay. 342. So by 342. 342. Yeah, 342. Let me restart again. Okay. 347. Nine eight four three four zero two. Okay, and your name again, please. My name is Pastor Coco Amitunu. Oh wow, you have to spell that for me, please. <laughs> huh? Spell it for me, please. Annie Coco. Okay, the, the first name is Coco. K O K O U. Coco. K O K U O. Coco. Yeah, my last name is Ametonu. A M E T O N U. Ametonu. Ametonu. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is my first time. Well, if you know anybody have uh, diabetes, blood pressure, even cancer. We treat cancer patients big time by God grace. You no, know, no, when the patient comply very well, they have a good result. So by God grace, we use God method, we use the herbs, we use hydrotherapy, we do herbal, chemo. we do a lot of stuff. With, we do a, everything natural, everything 100% natural, no chemical in it. Okay. Mm hmm So, you know, anyone sick, we help, we are available to help. Okay, I appreciate it. We also train people to take care of patients. That's a level one. What we're doing now is a level, that's a level two. What we are doing now is level one, just to educate people about health. But if you know anybody wants to learn how to treat patients, they got to take the class level two. And how you learn how you can make medicine, how you can do anything, how can you can have a business on a health, natural health practice. We do that training also, but it's much more advanced. So anyone who wants to learn this thing is available. You can call me and then we discuss on how to make it happen. Okay. There's a lot of studies that believe me, it's a great information for life. You will save a lot of people. So if you know anyone interested on practicing in natural ways, you're going to teach you everything, even how to do the blood work, everything natural. 
Okay, you can have your own microscope and do the blood work, do everything. Make medicine, taking care of patients, have your own center, we can help you set up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this thing we're doing now is just uh, to educate the people because people are dying from ignorance. People don't know. People don't know. Even a medical doctor, they have maybe a couple of hours of nutritional class. They don't have no knowledge about nutrition at all. And that is a real problem in this country. So the doctor cannot tell you what to eat, can't tell you what to avoid. They don't know. So we have to take our help at hand. We've got to be responsible ourselves. So I make a lot of medicine, medicine for anything. So anybody need anything, you just call me, and then we make it happen. Okay. I appreciate you right. very much. And God mm -hmm. continues to impart his wisdom. Amen. So let people know, family, friends, that something for free we are giving every week. And uh, I would suggest send me my email. We can send you some newsletters, stuff like that. So we can keep in, in, in talk and create a healthy family. Okay. Healthy, big family where people know where to go when they have a problem, where to go if they want to avoid disease. So we need these things very well. We really need them. So you can send your email to the same number, 347-984-3402. And then we can be sending you a lot of information in the future. Okay. Now, I encourage everyone on the line, tell to your family, friends, that they have to take their health seriously and be responsible. And we have this information free for everyone. Send us your email, and we will keep in touch. We will be sending you a newsletter as much as you can. Anything you need, we are here to help. And we don't charge you for it, okay? It's for free. Okay. And even if the person is overweight? Overweight, yes. I do overweight big time. This, I, right now, I still have people on overweight program. There's a woman, she finished her program. She lost 67 pounds. The other person lost 53 pounds. So people. People, it depends how much you want to lose, you know? No, I'm thinking of a relative. I have a family member that is very overweight. Oh, okay. We can help big time by government okay. because we have a lot of good results about weight loss. And our weight loss program is different because uh, at the same time you're losing weight, we make sure we build the collagen in your skin because when you're losing weight, and you don't build collagen in your skin, you're going to have a saggy skin. And your skin is your number one protection against everything. So when you start losing your half of your skin, you're in big trouble. So yeah, we do weight loss in a very, very healthy way. I'm concerned about that because all that flesh is just hanging down. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just Can I know your name, please? My name is Eva Miller. Isabella, okay, thank you for Madam, being on the line. Eva, today. Madam, Eva. Uh huh. Oh, Eva, Eva. okay. Yes, Miller. M I L L E R. Miller. Okay. M I L L E R. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, you can send me your email and uh, any information how you're going to be sending it to you in the future, okay? Okay, I'll be doing that. Thanks very much, son. Thank you. God so we have... God wisdom. Huh? I said God continues to increase your wisdom. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. So we have this teaching once a week. Every week we have this program once a week to teach about health. People need to get conscious about their health. Because sometimes we wait, or most of the time we wait until we get sick. Then we are ready to sacrifice anything for our health. And most of the time it's too late. Literally too late. You know, so our main goal is medication. The doctor will put you on medi medication. We are putting people on education. So 
We are medicating education, educating people how to prevent disease. So we take people off medication and put them on education. Amen. Okay. Okay. So we are Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll be getting in touch with you. Anyone else? You said uh, she was asking about a book by Robert Young. Is it a book or is it a video? Oh, Robert Young have a lot of books. But I was recommending something called Water Marker. It's a machine. It's a machine to make a better quality of water, especially for cancer patients. Any, any healthy person can have the same machine because the regular water we drink it has 24, mineral, 24 molecules clogged up in one. And all of that together cannot go through the cell membrane of your cell. You have to break it down to single molecules. And that machine breaks the water down to single molecules. It's a way effective that can get water. Okay. We, I gave uh, last week a homework, and uh, anyone's willing, do your homework, send it to me. I will correct it and send it back to you. Okay, for the new people on the line, you can uh, take us, and we're going to send you the homework. You can do it. It helps you not just to listen, but to really have a true education. We want people to really know that you can also cheat other people. work for this week? Say it again. Any homework this week? No, this week is a liberal homework. Just do your personal research on each law of health and set up your own way of reforming your health. That's very personal to yourself. Write down how you're going to be taking water. Write down how you're going to be eating. Write down till you're going to change your life, what time you go to bed, how can you make your schedule in a way that you can go to bed early. So you sit down and set up your new lifestyle way. But if somebody feels like sending to me that I can correct to send it back to you, I'm very open to that. What do we send the, the homework to? You send it to my email, amikoyo81 at gmail.com. A-M-E-A-M-E-K-O-Y-O-81 at gmail.com. Amikoyo81 gmail.com. Once more, A M E K O Y O eighty one at gmail dot com. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any question or any comment? Okay, anybody can make a comment, okay? You can make a comment, uh, you can ask question. it's a very open floor.
Okay. If we don't have a question or comment, then we are going to pray to close. All right. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because you care for us. You want to change our life. You want to teach us your ways. Please help us to be very conscious that our life caused the death of Christ. That we have to be mindful that we are accountable on how we treat our body. Help us to know that without you, we cannot live a peaceful life, a healthy life. We just cannot. I recommend all the family to your care, the young people preparing for marriage. Lord, guide them and help them to learn your principles that they will, by God's grace, submit to your biddings. Give us wisdom, guide us, help us to reform our life in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so we come to the end of uh, today's lecture, and God willing, we will see again next week. Next week, probably this Monday, next week. Thank you again. God bless.